Hi, and welcome to Doorways to Learning, where we open doors to educational marvels all over the world. In episode 23, for instance, we speak with Mary Gordon, the founder of Roots of Empathy, which is an initiative that organizes mothers with very young babies to go into primary classrooms so that the children in those classrooms from challenged areas learn empathy empirically. It's a conversation I have with Mary that's actually directly related to what we're going to talk about today. See if you can make the connection even before I tell you how I tie two ostensibly divergent subjects together. Got your neurons firing yet? If not, they're about to. So let's talk about adult bullies, all right? Just a bit, not much. We're not going to delve into all the particulars. I just would like to share some experiences that I've had. And most importantly, how did these people become adult bullies? Did it start when they're already adults? Or did it start when they were children and no one either tried to stop them or knew how to curb those tendencies? So you see, as always, I'm going to turn this right back to the classroom, which just proves how powerful we are as teachers. We can use techniques that can create productive, effective, caring global citizens. Or we have the choice to just focus on the curriculum dictated by our district and country and feel we've done our job. I think if you're listening to this podcast, you're automatically not one of the latter. You want to use your learning environment for so much more than reading, writing, and arithmetic. You want it to have a positive, extensive and long-reaching effects on every area of your students' lives. And this is really important inside and outside of the classroom. Now, doesn't that sound worthwhile? And doesn't it sound like what you're doing? So where is all this coming from? Well, as usual, something happened to me recently that's gotten to me to reflect deeply on the origins of dubious adult behavior once again. This reflection has been an emotional investigation, and also this is going to be a little bit of venting, but I think more reflection that's going to be very valuable for all of us, and you're going to relate to in seconds. So I have a little house in the mountains with the absolute best neighbors ever. And when you buy a house, don't fool yourself, you buy neighbors. However, there are two neighbors behind me that I don't consider directly in my neighborhood because they use a different street. And they have a dog that they let bark all day and all night. Now, what do we do in this case? You're in a situation in which you love everything about your environment, except for one really what turns out to be invasive element. Because of how my house is designed, there's nowhere I could be where that dog's barking wasn't really loud and turned out to be very stressful for me. And even in podcast interviews on my own and when other people were talking to me, you could hear that brown little noise box barking in the background. Also, because of the way the neighborhood was designed, I was the one, the only one affected by it, so I couldn't count on anyone else to support me on this. And this is also a perfect opportunity to realize that even if it's just one person, even if it's just one student, we need to pay attention. So, In my neighborhood, just to give you uh, the rest of the the profile, everybody here has lived here most of their lives, if not all of their lives, so it was a challenging situation. I had some social pressures here. What I want to talk about, though, and explore a little bit, is where our decisions come from, how we're going to treat people, and most importantly, no, just as importantly, how we treat ourselves. I heard a long time ago, and it's probably familiar to you, We teach people how we want to be treated. And that means that we need to be self-aware. We need to reflect on what we need. And it also means that how we're treated and how we let other people treat us comes from how we were treated growing up as children. That's where our first expectations come from. Now, given all this, what would you have done in this situation? There are a lot of choices. One is to move. Trust me. (laughs) I still think about that sometimes, and the situation is almost under control completely. Another is to make that dog go away in some form or another. That was never, by the way, one of my options. You can be violent. You can be passive. You can try negotiating with the people. You can buy headphones and blast your eardrums with music. Or what I did was blast them with binaural sounds with the hopes that they will drown out the barking. I don't know if my eardrums will ever be the same, but it did help to some extent, but it did not solve the problem. 
this was not just a month or two, people. This was three years. Three years of trying to negotiate with these people, asking them as diplomatically as I could because I care about them. I cared about them. I care about them. They're human beings on the planet. They deserve respect. They were not showing me respect by caring about how their dog was influencing my life, but that wasn't going to change my core value, and that is to respect the people around you. So I did talk to them three years talking to them. A few hours, it went a little better. Sometimes a whole day, it was a little better, but it started again. My closest neighbors who have known them all their lives begged me not to go to the police. So what did I do? I meditated. I prayed. I bathed myself in this binaural music with the headphones that promised to relax every cell of my body. But in the end, I would actually go to bed shaking because of the stress of the sound. I mean, all day barking. Now, no one who knows me would say that I am a shrinking flower. But in these types of situations, our past is a huge factor and how we perceive our rights. And at some point, my meditation did help, not in silencing the dog, but in finally letting it dawn on me that I had the right to a peaceful and respectful home environment, and everywhere else for that matter. And I needed that peaceful and respectful home environment one way or another. So what did I do? I found the police in the street one day and and saw it as a sign from the universe that it was time to do something a little more official. And I spent time asking him a million questions, what I could do, what my options were. And he said, call a lawyer. I did. She told me to go back to the police. He was absolutely wonderful, mostly because, well, he's a good person (laughs) and he's good at his job, but also because I had evidence, I had videos, I had messages they had sent to me that were really questionable. And he wrote the whole thing up and then came up to my house, was astounded by the noise. And there are still some things to make it last forever, forever, because my decision is that I deserve forever a peaceful and respectful living environment. But the whole reason for sharing this story with you, there are two reasons. One is the change that happened in me to make this external nuisance change. And the other is the bullying and the value I find in recognizing what bullying is in children and in adults. And then thinking about where it comes from. If you find an adult bully, where does that come from? So as educators, we can stop bullying in its tracks when children are still young. And then hopefully we're not going to have adult bullies. And so hopefully now you see the connection for how I began introducing Mary Gordon, because her initiative, and I really encourage you to listen to it because she is absolutely phenomenal. She decided to bring babies into a classroom to help students from very challenged areas who didn't have empathy at home, who had parents who were abusive or alcoholics or drug addicts who were not mm, emotionally available for their children. And in the classroom, they learned empathy. And what happened? One of the byproducts was that bullying stopped as well. And the children who were bullies even admitted that they used to bully their classmates and now they don't because of the program. So her idea, and this is what I see has worked, and this is what other people who support her has seen that works, is that when we can feel what others feel, we usually don't want to perpetuate that feeling. And bullying stops at a very young age if we give students the opportunity to gain that empathy. And we don't want adult bullies. So just to close up the connection, in this situation, I realized that it didn't begin by me seeking help. I didn't have that initial reaction because I didn't know that I deserved a peaceful environment. Why? Because I realized I was raised by a bully. My mother, God bless her, was a bully and man, she was good at it. I don't know if you believe in soul contracts that we choose our experience. And maybe I chose my mother because I knew she'd be a bully and it was a lesson I needed to learn. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't read the fine print. But what's true is that I grew up being bullied by someone, you know, masterful at it. And what it did was give me this idea, which is not true, that I didn't deserve to ask for my needs and I didn't deserve to be respected by other people. I've been learning that. And This experience now seems like it's closing up a whole circle. I was bullied growing up, and now I have the same thing as an adult, and I can change it, and that's what I've done. 
I also want to say that my neighbors have the opportunity for growth also to change their paradigm about respecting not just their needs, but the people around them. And that's huge for everyone involved. And I have this opportunity to also really understand one other aspect of bullying, the triumph you feel when it stops, when you realize that respecting yourself is expansive and so positive and it's so liberating. So we want to share that with our students as well. It's not just the bullying stops, it's that you stop feeling like a victim. And that's huge. <laughs> that's really big. So I have a lot of activities on my website precisely for this and probably because this has been my past. There are team building activities, there are strategies to strengthen the effective domain, which means that children feel safe and secure in your learning environment, and techniques that promote personal and intrapersonal confidence. If we foster these in the classroom, we foster compassion, and we help develop a future adult population that cares about other people and respects themselves and other people. What do you think? So please, please share with me any experience you've had with bullies, either as children or adults, and how you feel about the whole issue. Next week, we're going to open more doors to best practices on learning. And it's going to be a really special episode because I'm going to share a compilation of conversations with some incredible educators you haven't heard from yet. And so I'm really excited to share their gorgeous voices and talk about a little more briefly than usual, their experiences in education. In the meantime, please check out all different types of activities at scaffoldingmagic.com and have so much fun in your classes and at home and see you next week.